Americans are upset and they are angry that the government's been weaponized against them. But I think they're better served if we remain dispassionate in reviewing this evidence. But I have to admit, I, I came here today trying to be dispassionate, but I'm feeling emotion. I'm feeling disgust. Bef before us, among these witnesses, has represented decades of exemplary service in the military, in the FBI, service to our country for which your families have, have sacrificed, for which you have sacrificed to give this service, and now the other side of the aisle just wants to disparage you for bringing forth facts that the American people need to know, that we need to know if we're going to change these whistleblower laws so that you're not punished for bringing us the truth. This is our fourth, or we've had four hearings, and I'm noticing a, a, a disturbing trend here. Big business is working with the government to weaponize against the American people. And, uh, you know, the, the government says, well, this is okay because we're not violating the Constitution. The, the, the big business is doing this uh, voluntarily, and we saw this with the uh, social media companies. But I want to play a uh, testimony from a whistleblower who's not here with us today. If you could cue that up about how we've seen, in this instance, one of the biggest corporations in America working with the FBI to violate civil liberties. I believe it was either on January 7th or 8th, the Bank of America, um, with no directive of the FBI, <clears throat> data mined its customer base. And data mined a date range of five to seven years of any BOA customer who used a BOA product. And by BOA product, a debit card. They compiled that list, and then on top of that list, they put anyone who had purchased a firearm during any date. I find that testimony chilling. That was the retired FBI supervisory intelligence analyst, George Hill, who gave us that testimony. And what he said there is the Bank of America compiled a list of everybody who used a credit card or a debit card between January 5th and January 7th inside of Washington, D.C., and gave that to the FBI. But before they did, they looked at anybody who had ever purchased a firearm, according to their records, and elevated those people to the top of the list. And they didn't geofence it to Washington, D.C. You could have, as Mr. Hill testified, you could have bought a gun in 1999 in Iowa with a Bank of America card, and then you got heightened attention, and then it was given to the FBI. Now, whether the FBI asked for this or whether they did this voluntarily is very chilling because Bank of America, you know, they've got a lot of issues in front of the government. And this is where you get into this unhealthy feedback loop. Bank of America spent a quarter million dollars lobbying us on the American Rescue Plan, issues related to Paycheck Protection Program, general issues related to data security, and general issues related to interchange, and general issues related to privacy. The irony of it. Bank of America is violating your privacy, working hand in glove with the FBI. Now, they'll, the FBI will say, we didn't ask for this, they just gave it to us. It doesn't matter. It's a violation when you get to this level of cooperation. Now, I want to turn to something else that's troubling me very much. The whistleblowers here before us today have described incentive-based payments related to increasing the number of criminal investigations. Mr. Friend and Mr. Allen, you've talked about this. Mr. Friend, can you tell us what that's about and why that might be unhealthy? It's extremely unhealthy. It's called integrated program management. It's a uh, process that the FBI uses annually to essentially establish arbitrary metrics for itself to achieve as far as opening up a certain number of cases and using certain tools and getting certain accomplishments. This, this in football terms, this sounds eerily similar to the Saints bounty gate, if folks know, remember that. And that scandal, coaches would pay players cash bonuses for hits that would result in injuries to other players. Players would ad receive additional pay if their tackle resulted in an opposing pay player being taken out of the game. These non-contract bonuses were part of an underground culture that incentivized dirty behavior. When the activity was exposed, 
The Saints organization was widely condemned. The defensive coach was initially suspended indefinitely and the head coach was suspended for an entire season. Somebody at the FBI needs to be suspended for the dirty tactics that they've used. If we recognize it in sports, it's not hard to recognize it here in government. And I yield back to balance my time. Gentleman yields back.